Yo, hello, hello, welcome to the elephant in the room. My name is Aaron and in today's video we will continue with the chapter Systems to Organize Societies from the book The Money Game and Beyond. All right, all right, all right. It's the 11th of January 2022 and I feel like the world is getting dumber and dumber and dumber and more idiotic overall to the point where it is so ridiculous that you can just laugh about it. And I want to show you an example. It's maybe you've heard about NFTs, um, which are basically tokens um, that you can own. And these are some examples you see here some images, some digital images or GIFs that can be replicated billions of times with zero marginal cost and some people just buy them and sell them for thousands of euros. <laughs> I mean, check out this one. This is traded for 7000 euros. Uh, yeah, this is the new currency, Ethereum, a cryptocurrency. And um, yeah, this is just used to, to trade these NFTs. Or oh, look at that picture, it's $62,000. I would never pay $62,000 for a digital image that I can just copy and paste and it's the same. It's so ridiculous. I mean, how did people lost any kind of connection or sense of reality so much to the point that they buy and sell these NFTs, these digital images for $18,000, for $6,000. It is just, I mean, yeah, what can you do? You can just laugh about it and think so many people are idiots, just fucking idiots. That's, that's what they are. If you buy and sell NFTs, something is completely wrong with you, honestly. And yeah, these are some of the highest prices. Of course, this is completely exaggerated. Um, this one was traded for $34,000. Uh, this one $25,000. This one is what? 1 million or something? Or this one 300,000? <laughs> I mean, I can buy so much food. I can buy so much things that are more important than a fucking GIF or, or digital image. This is a fucking garbage ton for 93, what, thousand or millions of dollars? I mean, it's just so ridiculous. Look at that, 24 million dollars. And this is, I would never fucking buy this one for 24 millions then. I'm not retarded, I'm not, <laughs> I mean. I mean, if you're thinking about buying NFTs, then maybe you should also check out some interesting documentaries about space, about the universe, about alien life or some other far away distant planets that are out there. I mean, the universe is so vast and if you think about it, it is so mesmerizing. And I can just recommend basically all documentaries from Melody Sheep, um, he put so much effort in his documentaries. This one is about um, alien life. And then there are other ones like the secret history of the moon. Very interesting one. Time lapse of the future. It just puts things into perspective and maybe helps you grow a more scientific brain. And instead of trading NFTs, you should check out some documentaries from him or maybe also from Video Need. Um, I mean, there are so many fascinating documentaries about space, about um, planets, about also atoms. We are made out of atoms. Just think about that. You are fucking stardust. You're, the, the atoms you are made of, they were fusionated. They fusionated in somewhere in, in a distant star. And they, you know, different atoms melted together and then they formed new atoms and this is just so amazing and so mind-blowing that you just um, should think about our society as a 
shithole where people trade NFTs just for the sake of trading. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. All right. So let's get back to the book. Um, sorry about that long intro. Um, but um, yeah, we will continue with the little kid because this little kid doesn't really know how to organize his fellow human beings on planet Mars. Um, let's just recap shortly. Um, there were some interesting ideas from Friedrich Engels, Karl Marx and Richard Owen uh, who proposed communism or like socialism and then communism and said something like okay workers must revolt and take over the means of production and then somehow organize themselves. They didn't really lay out a path how to do that. So there's something missing there. I mean, they proposed some amazing things like machines should take over the work, uh, human beings should be free to do whatever they like to do, and this is very progressive. But when other people tried to implement these ideas, it ended up as a chaos, so many people died, millions were killed um, because of Lenin, Nayer and Mao, um, who were just in the end also some sort of dictators. All right, before we continue with the Mars story, we will look at the state of the Earth and how we organize ourselves today. Basically, we organize ourselves in many, many tribes, which also doesn't make sense. I mean, I grew up in Germany, but what is Germany? It's just a fucking tribe. And then there's the US tribe, there's the Brazilian tribe, there's the Australian tribe, the Indian tribe, China, Russia, what the fuck is this? We are all human beings and that's it. We all need food, we all need clean water, we all need shelter, we all need clean air. So what the fuck, why, why is that? And this is also, of course, related to trade because some tribes claim ownership onto their land, their country. And they say, okay, we own now this and this resource and we can trade this for your resource and then we um, yeah, just trade this for that. So, of course, it's related to our trade-based society. And if we look at the governments, it's, it's always a mess. It's either one chief or a couple of chiefs and different parties um, who are just talking, talking, talking without really doing something. Um, and yeah, we also have some military dictatorships. So yeah, um, it's just about the global trade and those who try to control the global trade still fight today over the extremes we've presented so far. Capitalism and free market on one hand, socialism and communism on the other, providing the backdrop for the terms left wing and right wing. And I'm so sick of these discussions of are you left, are you right? Are you, what the fuck? I'm a human being, I help other people, I'm a nice human being. If you have some problems, I can help you if I can. Um, but I'm not fucking left or right, <laughs> okay? Well, no one goes near those extremes today, nor they have any real definition for them. They often fight somewhere in the middle. All of the other systems in the world today are variations of the two we just described. They only differ in their details. Yes, and since they are all a mix of ideals, let's see what these mixes have brought about. Most tribes try to merge socialism with capitalism. And now, as an example, um, the US claims to have a free market, making them capitalists, yet under certain conditions they also provide some free services for people like Medicare, like healthcare, unemployment benefits and food allowance programs for the poor, while they also provide infrastructure like roads and how, where to make them. National parks, state-controlled public spaces, along with making laws, enforcing the rules that apply to all of the benefits above and so much more. Thus, they are also socialists, so they also have some programs that help other people. But it comes with a strong flavor of dictatorship. Does the NSA spying on its own citizens sound familiar with you? Of course, the NSA tracks basically everything what you do. And um, plus, if your mom has a big palace and vast amounts of land, you will also get to inherit that and then it eventually goes to your kids and so on. Yeah, so that part is along the lines of feudalism. So yeah, if you have rich parents, you will probably inherit their wealth 
and um, you will inherit that wealth to your par uh, to your children probably so this is just feudalism right and as we can see it's basically just a mess in, in every tribe. It's even here in Germany. There are also some programs that help other people, but then there are also the same thing. If, if your parents are rich, you will inherit that wealth. And that's why also in Germany, there's a huge inequality. There are also a very low percentage that owns probably two third or one third of all the wealth in Germany. And more than 50% own very little, if anything at all. And the same thing in China, it's said that they control people, um, the education, the services, etc. And the means of production, yet the free market is booming in China and has produced more billionaires than the US while hosting over 64 million empty apartments, all while most of their population remains quite poor. It's rather interesting that they are still labeled by many other tribes as communists, equal society for all. What the fuck? If you call China as a communist tribe, um, then yeah, it's very different from the original ideas of communism. You see the confusion and mutation of those core ideals? There really is no such thing as a socialist, communist or free market tribe. All tribes today are a huge and complicated mix of so many ideas. So try to avoid getting trapped into that kind of debate. When someone says a tribe is a communist tribe, just ask them if it has no leader, no money, has eliminated scarcity and so on. If they say that one is a free market system, ask them what they mean by free. So yeah, this is also a great point um, because many people don't even know what the ideas of communism was or, or are. So that's why, yeah, we need to educate people about these things. That's why I make these videos. <laughs> you know, think about all of the bad things we've presented in the first part. With child slavery, coercion, corruption, no care for the stability of the environment, profit overall, etc. All of these things happen in all tribes and all kinds of regimes from China to US, from Uganda to Canada, Romania to Pakistan, Japan to Brazil. Even with all of these tribes different rules and ways of organizing themselves, they still face the same issues. And I can tell you, even here in Germany, there's also so much corruption, money laundering is happening on a daily basis. It's a shit show wherever you look. And you know, these are things that you can just realize if you look into these things, if you search for, okay, how does it look like in Germany? Is there corruption going? Is there money laundering going on? And what about slavery or what about human trafficking? Is it also happening in Europe? Of course it is happening in Europe, but you don't see that usually because Usually people have a job, they go to work, um, they probably have a family, take care of their kids and that's it. Maybe play some games, watch Netflix, watch any kind of Hollywood bullshit movie and then they don't care because they don't look into these things. Um, and yeah, even if a tribe proclaims themselves to be very progressive or very caring for their citizens, it might not be true. For example, case in point, Canada. Pretty much all have great things to say about their tribe, especially about the healthcare system. Their healthcare is socialized, meaning that if you have uh, boo-boo, if you're sick, if you're ill, you get it fixed for free. You will be treated, um, whether you're rich, poor or homeless, they say. But they still can't escape the money world. Some of their hospitals have monetary incentives to clear rooms for new patients. To make more money for the hospital, they rush to clean a room as soon as its previous patient is discharged, resulting in less care for the cleaning. And in hospitals where diseases can quickly spread, that can easily translate into life and death situations. More so, since they also run on a state budget and experience cuts in those budgets, they are often forced to reduce the staff that focuses on cleaning the rooms, making the situation even worse. For the same reason, they also keep their overall staff at a minimum and often have to reduce or stagnate scientific and technological progress in the medical field. 
So this is just a small example here. Um, but we can continue when we look at the at some Canadian businesses, be it private or state-owned, and we have plenty of more examples. Plumbers and other repair services are incentivized to inflate problems to get you to pay them more for repairs than they are worth. Dentists will often recommend expensive and often unnecessary treatments because they must stay in business too. Eco, healthy and natural products are often misleadingly labeled to entice you to buy them, sometimes outright lying about various aspects so you don't even know what you're buying. Eyeglasses may cost around $20 to make but are sold at $300 to $1000 just because of the brand and you can go on and can go on and go on and go on and you can just check out this video series to see those examples too because if you think about okay yeah canada is so great or even norway or sweden or scandinavia i'm sure you can find these examples there as well it doesn't matter wherever you look around the world it's there's always this this structure of our society always this trade game going on so there is no escape from that and there are problems wherever you look that's the that's the thing so all of these examples occur within what some people consider to be the greatest most peaceful fair and most caring tribe in the world then consider that these examples cover both privatized and state controlled businesses both capitalism and socialism ideals and of course, you might recognize that these same practices occur within your tribe as well. Here is another example um, what Tio expected in Romania. Basically, he took a taxi and he was thinking, okay, this is 1.9 RON, which is the Romanian currency. And um, yeah, it costs 1.9 RON per kilometer. So he took the taxi and after 10 kilometers of drive, when they um, arrived at their destination, he had to pay 190 rons or the Romanian currency. And the taxi driver was just saying, oh, well, the, the dot is just from the taxi, from the E, from the I. And it's, it's saying 19 Ron and, and the dot is from the eye. So yeah, this is just a great example of how people are just put into that position of scamming. Um, because they have to feed their family, they have to make a living. So of course you are incentivized to, to cheat like this. And it doesn't matter if you're in, in Romania or if you're walking in a in a mall in Germany or in the US or wherever um, there's also this scamming going on think about the prices $4.99 lately um, or a couple weeks ago I've been in Berlin and I was in 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 a electronic store in Media Markt and I was just thinking about all the prices there and they were just 4 euros 99 cents uh, 20 euros or 19 euros 99 cents 299 euros 99 cents 459 euros and 99 cents or 90 cents or whatever and i'm just like you guys are so fucked up i, <laughs> I mean it's just it's it's just a scamming game that we're playing here it, and that's just trade just think about whenever you see something in this world think about okay maybe this is a result of trade because people are incentivized to scam to um, lie to 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 do bad things so um, yeah another great example is Volkswagen <laughs> another uh, huge brand uh, huge car manufacturer from Germany these guys I, I know them I've heard about the scandal I know what they did and the whole world knows, but they, the whole world doesn't know that it's a result of our trade-based society. Um, so yeah, basically what happened there, there was a law that was saying, okay, these cars are not allowed to emit more and more than this border. It, it doesn't, it's not allowed. And then what Volkswagen 
did was they were saying we can make a huge profit by installing a smart device in our cars that when they are tested will meet the emission limits of the test but when they are used on the roads they'll emit the vehicle's normal emissions which are 40 times over the limit people will flock to buy our low polluting cars since we'll be able to market them as being so eco-friendly well it turns out that they've been doing this for the past seven years and it was only discovered by accident a few weeks ago so this was in 2015 and it seems rather obvious that they don't care about the environment or our health only for growing their business it's like they said so we can continue to pollute the environment which eventually leads to the destruction of our species and many others but who cares we'll make a ton of extra money if we just install this device in the cars we make well that sounds like a viable business plan to me let's make some profits that's how insane it has become and in case you didn't know Volkswagen owns Audi, Bentley, Bugatti, Lamborghini, Porsche and many other car makers and models. So I know what's interesting is that this happened already more than 30 years ago, almost 40 years ago in 1974. Um, they ran a similar scan and only paid $120,000 of fine when they got caught. So much for accountability. So these are just things that happen on a regular basis of pretty much every big company. Here are some more examples. Speaking of profit over human existence, ExxonMobil, the largest oil company in the world, apparently knew about climate change issues since 1981, seven years before it became a public issue, according to newly discovered email from some of the company's own scientists. Despite this, the company spent millions over the next 27 years to promote climate denial. So, yeah, there are, here are some more examples. Um, yeah, if big companies like this, so exposed to the entire world, are willing to risk so much for profit that they blatantly defy tribe's rules, imagine all of the things that the many more smaller ones attempt to get away with. Now imagine the big ones that have not been caught yet. So yeah, the point here is that laws don't work. They don't stop people from doing crimes, from doing bad things, from lying, from um, corrupt other people. And this is, this is also a pretty interesting thing because, well, yeah, people just proclaim as a solution, okay, let's put some more laws into existence, into practice. Let's make more laws to stop these companies from doing bad things or people in general um, but we have to admit that these things don't work and i can also um, talk about this example which is about selling organs like some people um, sell organs for money um, that i showed or that we showed in the first part of this book and they still do that even if it's illegal in most tribes well-intended legal folks try to implement measures to combat such situations so there are some people who say okay let's make it um let's make a rule so that people don't um, do this illegal organ um, trading anymore and in this case they said the donor must be interviewed to make sure that they are willingly donating the organ for charity not for money and that was their solution to the problem a law in order to make things more just and legal so what happened is in response it's become a common practice that the ones selling their organs for lack of money are trained by others on what to say during these interviews in order to pass them simply put when you try to stop people from making a profit in a world based on profit then people will always find ways to cheat the same principle seems to apply to all parts of today's societies for every issue that exists there are people trying to solve them with more and more rules and laws yet they seldom have any real success in eliminating the issues so i hope you got the point some people have to sell their organs because they lack money maybe they need to take care of their children's or their um, wife or whatever 
grandparents and then they are forced to sell their organs and now other people said okay um, if you want to um, give an organ you need to say you donate it you give it out of charity and then what happens was that these people who have to sell their organs because they lack money they were trained by other people like basically other people told them exactly what they need to say in order to pass these interviews so that they can donate their organs and get that money so yeah basically they were looking for a way to bypass that rule all right let's continue and this point is about that socialist programs are not only subject to mutilation due to the market system as we've showcased so far but they have become so molded on the market system that even its free education system which seems like a socialist approach focuses almost exclusively on preparing children to become workers thus merchants <clears throat> and that's what it is you go to school and then you maybe do an apprenticeship like i'm doing right now and just to become a worker basically a merchant or you can also study and then you need to find a job and become a worker the need is not to have free education but a diverse scientifically literate populace within a saner society not free healthcare, but easily accessible and technologically progressive healthcare. Trying to inject free programs into today's world is a long practiced tradition, and while it can be shown to have helped some and has brought about advancements, both within the context of today's monetary system, it's still little more than a bunch of band aids for ongoing problems, with little to no effect on curing the actual problems and often making the problems worse. So I hope you also got that point. I'm going to resist trying to point at examples of corruption and other ill effects of the capitalist world. The enormous negative repercussions of the monetary system are so ubiquitous that it might prove easier to try to sum up the squares of all numbers in existence, but I'm sure you're already well aware of the kinds of problems we are talking about here. Then here it's about that having a good business does not mean you will succeed. Just think about if you take this idea of a free market seriously and you think that okay anybody can become a millionaire, anybody can create their own business and will succeed and there's this thing of the American dream, I hope of course it's completely retarded because if you grow something, um, if you have a company that is getting more and more successful, it will most likely be eaten up by other giants, by other huge companies. Think about WhatsApp, think about Instagram. They were both kind of competitors against Facebook and now they are one huge entity, Meta, who like, yeah, wants to build the metaverse now. What the fuck? <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, we see this all around. Um, global giants basically run the world, have so much influence on politics, on everything. And um, the majority of humanity is enslaved, if not all. Because even if you're a CEO of one of these huge companies, if you are Christian Klein, the, the chief operator, the CEO of SAP, he, he is also forced in this society. He also needs to um, make this company more profitable or sustain its business and he has to go to work. Of course he could quit because he probably has so much money but yeah I think also so many rich people they are stressed. You know if you have a lot of money you don't want to lose that money. You need to take care of that money. So really it's we are, we are in trapping it's a cell it's a trap where we are trapping ourselves into just for what to to trade <laughs> it's so and that's what i mean by like the world is becoming more and more dumb because i feel like so many people don't see that they don't see that it's just about trade and that we can do something about that trade um, so yeah, what these companies are doing is basically come on in, we buy promising companies that compete with us so we can grow more and more powerful by eliminating any competition. Sit down, have a snack, 
sign the paper, take the money, now go back. What a quack. Yeah, if we check out those global giants, IBM, Samsung, Disney, Coca-Cola, with anyone you can find corruption, you can find so many shady practices that they are doing. Let's just check out Disney, for example, and then we will stumble upon criticism of the Walt Disney Company. Huge, <laughs> huge Wikipedia article. We can also check out, of course, Amazon. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, check out this one. And then there's Jeff Bezos and he's the richest motherfucker in the world. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? He's just a prick. He's a... He's also just a victim of our trade-based society. Um, I mean, how can you... Yeah. Then, of course, McDonald's. There's criticism of everything. If you look around uh, Samsung, there's also criticism. You can search. We can search with... I have the trade-free search engine, Sirx. Um, let's search SAP criticism. And then we can also micro sub criticism. Yeah, critique of SAP system. There was a, yeah, I want to show you. It was a recent article. Um, Tigers show. Yeah, this one. This is the article I read recently. <laughs> it's from the 12th of November last year. So just like two months ago. Actually, almost exactly two months ago. And this article is about um, SAP was stealing... Um, um, how is that called? Let me check it out. intellectual property right of course <laughs> basically this whole thing of this is something that i invented and i have a patent on this right now and i'm going to sell you that patent or i'm going to own that patent it's just ridiculous um but what sap did was they were stealing that intellectual property and um yeah here you can see the these uh guys in the the board the chairman yeah they try to hide that of course um, but um, yeah I mean this article is from the target show this is uh, the one of the the German main TV or yeah broadcast stations uh, maybe you've heard of it and then of course Microsoft criticism Microsoft is working together with SAP um yeah so yeah i hope you get the point and you can search for these things yourself um wherever there is a huge company it is so likely that it is involved in any shady practices or whatever so yeah consider the ideal that states within a free market and capitalism system businesses will focus on pleasing their customers and not engage in shady behaviors that could adversely affect their image and recognize that this is only valid on paper not in reality the reality is made possible by lack of other options monopoly industry collusion boards legal protection against lawsuits etc positive advertisements that these companies push so that people forget about their bad past or just because people don't care or aren't motivated enough to organize against such practices. Capitalism's competitive approach maybe looks good on paper, but it has become disastrous in practice, despite the fact that it helped bring about significant developments in technology, services and goods. But as we argued in another article, far more progress could have been made using a completely opposite approach through cooperation. Yeah, there's this other book where we address this issue, um, where we talk about what is more, what is better, what is more efficient or effective, competition or cooperation. 
but we will check out this um, in another video series. Okay, we will now leave behind the world of capitalism and free market as we've presented plenty of its harmful effects over and over and over again throughout this series and with many other articles that we have made on the subject, all of which you can find um, on tromsa.com slash books. I mean, if people are willing to intentionally jump in front of cars in some tribes, here's a video about that, because they might get money if they are lucky and get run over, then what more is there to say about the sick, twisted world we live in? One thing we'd like you to take away from all of this is that when tribes proclaim themselves as this or that, they are neither this or that. They all qualify as a salad, a mix of this, that and the other. This is why in 2008 the credit crisis in the US led to 30% unemployment in Spain and an outbreak of bird flu in China dramatically increased the price of chicken in Canada. They are all connected and are basically the same, differing only in the details of their money-based rules and notions and rituals. So yeah, this is also interesting now because we are in the middle of a global pandemic, of the COVID pandemic. And this happened in China, but we are so interconnected that it spread around the world so fast. And um, yeah, what happens in China, what happens in the US, what happens in Mexico, in Brazil, in Ulaanbaatar, that also affects me. Or like, well, yeah, all of us. So yeah, this photo illustrates this very well. Our blessed homeland, they are barbarous wastes. Our glorious leader, they are wicked despot. Our great religion, they are primitive superstition. Our noble populace, they are backward savages. Our heroic adventurers, they are brutish invaders. So yeah, I think you obviously got the point. As for democracy, now <laughs> an interesting idea. I mean, just think about it. Uh, we need more democracy and freedom. This is a popular proclaim of so many parties, of so many organizations, institutions, democracy for all. We need more democracy. Well, think about it for a minute. If it was really up to the people to determine what they want, then online copyright probably wouldn't exist as the vast majority of people break those laws without much thought. Tribes probably wouldn't go to war, as most people don't want that. Salaries would increase, work time would be reduced, prostitution and drugs would be legalized, some leaders might actually be executed, as many seem to proclaim this wish, and so on. Of course, there's no such thing as democracy, and even if the notion sounds good in principle, it's not, because it says that whatever the majority wants, it should get. If 51% of the people want all people of a certain color, religion, nationality, etc. in prison or whatever, then fulfilling that wish qualifies as democracy. If science was managed as a democracy, we would still live in caves and there would be no science. Plus, just like all of the other governing ideals mentioned within this book, democracy is always merged with other governing concepts, which makes what was originally proposed and still claimed nearly irrelevant. So, all of you mighty ugly tribes, stop with all of your pretending to be new and bold and let's look at alternatives beyond this. While Owen, Marx, Engels and the others like them try to grow a set of bold ideas about organizing societies with something other than capitalistic profit-driven methods, they failed to provide a clear path. They also did not have the knowledge or technology that we have available today. All right, that was it, I think, for this video. Um, and we will get back to the Mars story in the next video. And we will invite some more people. Um, we will say goodbye to the other ones, to feudalism, capitalism, democracy, um, communism as well, and um, socialism anarchy and all of these guys <laughs> they have interesting ideas um, but we will invite others and really discuss about how we can organize ourselves in better ways all right um, so yeah I think that was it for this video is there anything else I want to say 
Um, yeah, well, basically I'm just doing my thing. I'm happy that I can continue doing these videos. Ah yeah, I also want to show you, um, there is the trade-free directory, tradefree.org. And I keep on adding some goods and services that I find. Um, there are so many amazing projects out there. Recently, I've added free cut, free CAD. Um, this is just a CAD software um, and it's trade free. Yeah, hang on, let me show that to you in the software center. I just share add remove software. Um, this is just in Trumjaro. I can just search for free cut and there it is. I can just download the official repositories package and I checked it. It comes without any um, ads, without any trackers, of course. Uh, just an amazing trade free um, 3D parametric modeler. Um, I think it's very powerful as well. You can, you can construct all kinds of different things. And there are so many people working hard on that piece of software. If you think about it, how much human brain power needs to go into something like that. And they provide it for free. Of course, you could say, well, they advertise Facebook here and Twitter and Discord and other trade-based services. But they also have a Mastodon account. Um, they are on the matrix protocol on element um, yeah I also want to make a video series about these trade free goods and services uh, of course I also added it to the German um, trade free directory um, it looks a bit different I, I changed a bit the style I prefer <laughs> these rounds thing a, a bit more <laughs> And yeah, there's also, of course, no, this free tube that I added recently. There's free cut here. And yeah, of course, the amazing thing, let's get back to the English one. You can add yourself um, some projects, some, some goods and services. That's what we try to focus on here. Um, we want to have a collection of trade free goods and services. It doesn't matter how they are created, who who pays the servers of Wikipedia or whatever. If it's a trade-free service, then it's a trade-free service and that's it. You can si submit some more just here. Um, all, you need in, all you need is to type in the title and you need a, an image, the official website, uh, small content, what is it about, some text, what is it, what is it offering. Then you can select here goods and services and the category and then there's a, a small anti-spam question and that's it. And another cool thing that is open for everybody is to review these things. You can just um, go to an entry and you can just um, review it. You can give five blocks, one block if you say, okay, this is not trade free because of this and that. Um, for example, here you could also say now, okay, free cut is um, not completely trade free because they advertise Facebook and um, Twitter and the like. So you could just give four blocks for that. Anyway, so let's stop here. Let's continue with the book in the next video. Stay safe, stay um, healthy and stay focused and stay sane in this world because it's very tricky. <laughs> All right, that was it from here. Um, I'm just gonna say take care, see you in the next video and much love.